We got swords, we got guns, we got spears, knives, hammers, bombs, rope. You want it? It's yours, my friend. As, as long, long as, as you, you have, have enough, enough rubies. rubies. Welcome to Mojo Plays, Josh here, and today I'll be counting down my picks for the top 10 coolest weapons of Mortal Kombat. Many of our beloved fighters have dabbled in different weaponry over the years, so this list will focus on what I've personally found to be the most iconic, befitting, creative, and overall just plain cool, while comparing them to their real life counterparts. Let's get it. Number 10, Steel Fans, Katana. She's beauty, she's grace, she'll chop off your face. The Blue Assassin's signature blade that doubles as a handheld cooling device has been slicing up opponents since 93. Katana's fans originate from the real-life premise of War Fans, a fascinatingly effective defense tool in the martial art of Tessin Jutsu. Her weapon perfectly encaptures both the princess's elegance and mastery of the martial arts. Be it a melee weapon or projectile, you see one of these, you're probably thinking this. Unless, uh, unless you're thinking this. But otherwise, probably this. I actually prefer his friend. <laughs> Kung Lao is not in our league. Number 9. Wrath Hammer, Shao Kahn. MK11's Shao Kahn doesn't hold a candle to previous incarnations. Previously, this thing was able to decimate any player willing to brave the big bad boss man. The Wrath Hammer was so bold as to be completely unblockable in MK9, causing 3 seconds stun as a little middle finger on the side. That's how scary she used to be. I cannot think of a better, more imposing weapon for the conqueror of all realms. Plus, not even the real world Warhammer or Maul equivalent could compare to its ridiculous size and the required strength you'd need to wield it. There's like seven or eight cardboard boxes backing this thing up, and I crushed probably four or five of them into nothingness. But you never want me to do this. The big meat tenderizer makes appearances in all sorts of MK media, in the mobile game, as an interactable background item, and as the main tool in MK11 script. In the con's absence, it seems someone almost always gets their hands on it. Bearing the dragon symbol, this hammer screams FINAL BOSS to me, and it'll forever haunt my dreams of trying the Challenge Tower Stage 300. Cardboard boxes. Number 8. Bionic Eye. Kano. Cue a legacy weapon that has been part of MK since the beginning. To me, Kano's laser shooting robot eye stands out as a part of what makes Mortal Kombat characters great. There's a special childlike fun in all their designs. Um, my guy shoots lasers from his eyes. This snazzy upgrade to Kano's kit gives him multiple science fiction upgrades, such as laser eyes, x ray vision, a scanning ability, and whatever this was. There's something to be said for a once common criminal who turns to technology to fight gods and wizards. Pretty dope. Plus, it wouldn't be Kano to me without an Aussie accent and a laser light show. Would you settle for me, sausage? Number 7. Teeth. Molina. As far as iconic goes, this is the be all and all. Most fans can recall the first time they discovered Melina's monster maw hiding beneath her veil. She uses her toothy endowments to chew and tear through her fellow combatants, comparable only to that of a saltwater crocodile in our universe. She's able to both break bones and deliver a sinister smile afterwards. Mortal Kombat X also features a three variation system, offering expanded biting abilities in her ravenous stance. Much of Melina's character revolves around these chompers, whose appearance continues to evolve with every new iteration. Lover or hater, who could forget the gnarly blend of beauty and beast these teeth bring to the roster? <laughs> Number 6, Razor Rimmed Hat, Kung Lao. Ah, uh, Lao. You may not be the shining star, but you'll always have your signature hat. Unless, of course, someone confuses you for Raiden. Regardless, the bladed brimmed hat is creativity to the max. Uh, I'm sure there's far easier weapons to use, but that doesn't stop the Shaolin. You'll not easily find a realistic equivalent in modern day, because throwing this thing around is just begging for the worst paper cuts imaginable. Though he's been completely in control of this deadly headwear since its origins in MK2, and we've seen it take on a few different forms, such as Buzzsaw? Okay. The iconic hat being featured in almost all of Kung Lao's fatalities. Be it teleporting, pulling rabbits from nowhere, or deflecting lasers as seen here, there's a ton this apparel is capable of. It exudes a certain swagger and personality only befitting of Lao, and he's a great character because of it. But your hat is no weapon. Well, that's just weird, Kung Lao. Number 5. Tarkat and Blades, Baraka. Shooting blades out of your arms to impale your enemies is a certain brand of badass reserved only for Wolverine and these guys. That is no toy! 
Baraka was once a lonely mutant, their words, not mine, but has since been retconned to the rank of general, and a fighter with huge damage potential to boot. Baraka's fictional race, hailing from... Well, it's not exactly clear. How many realms are there? Possesses built-in weapons that aid in their frenzied lust for blood. Basically, from the start, these nasty dudes were designed to be killer. And it's a hard point to miss when examining their design. Originally appearing to be metallic, MK11's Baraka sports a few bone-themed blades, while still capable of making serious sparks on the battlefield. They may be the jobbers of the MK-verse, but I can't help but love them and their goofy arm blades. Number 4. Sickle Noob Cybot Out of all the weapons B. Han is toyed with, his self-impaling sickle suits his shadowy edgelord aesthetic the best. Its Grim Reaper flavor while still being unique to him. The sickle, in reality, is a farming tool typically used for harvesting. However, the origin of the ninja concept as we know today stems from the common folk of feudal Japan who rebelled against the samurai. They often turned to utilize whatever weapons were available to the lower class. In this way, we can see a reflection of Noob Cybot ninja-inspired past in his choice of blade, despite being of Chinese heritage. And in MK lore, this original Sub-Zero was said to be a commoner's orphan until adopted into the Lin Kuei. Basically, it's an exceptional fit for the cold-hearted older bro, especially when looking at all the customizations to make this thing look hella scary. Number 3. Qatar Rain Well, being a brand new introduction to the series, what a superb choice of weaponry. MK11's Rain brings another layer of cultural interest when wielding this scissor knife of Indian origin. I had personally never heard of a folding dagger like this before until his recent reveal, piquing my interest into yet another one of Edenia's unique Asian-inspired weapons from the past. And man, does he ever bring out the style points when flipping this thing around? For a weapon of a waterbender, I suppose a simple water bucket just wouldn't have been enough, so they got creative. Much the opposite of Noob's sickle, the Qatar has been used by royalty and ceremonious acts of worship. It's no wonder Mr. High and Mighty comes equipped to battle with the fanciest push daggers possible. All in all, we hope it stays his signature weapon in future iterations to come. Number 2. Hook Sword Cabal Another out-of-the-box choice for this Black Dragon Warrior, slash cop, slash mercenary, slash revenant. It's all very retconny. Though throughout all the changes, his iconic hook swords have been by his side. There's not a ton of real world info surrounding this exotic weapon, but man are they a neat concept. Funny how weaponized metal fans have held more place in reality than a sword with a big fish hook bend in the end. Hmm. I know. The concept of the hook sword appears to be more suited for martial arts demonstration or practice. However, you won't see that stopping Cabal in game, busting out all sorts of wicked nasty moves on his opponents, utilizing a lethal blend of speed and range, even going as far as to seriously damage the Defender of Earthrealm in canon story mode. It's slightly fantasy meets slightly realistic, much like the rest of Cabal's wacky black dragon gear. So I wouldn't recommend getting in the speedster's way. You should up your arsenal, monk. With giant hook swords? What can I say? I'm eclectic. And number one. Kunai. Spear. Scorpion. Alright, go ahead, go on, say it, say the line. Get over here! <laughs> Maybe the most popular MK phrase, only to be rivaled by... Finish him! Or just yelling the words... Monokim! itself. There really ain't a weapon more badass or more closely tied to MK than Scorpion Spear. Well, it's been referred to by a few names, this kunai takes inspiration from the real-world rope dart, the use of which has been expanded upon in Mortal Kombat 11 by Scorpion performing further rope dart techniques. This thing has been a certified cool guy maneuver since the beginning, able to reach an enemy from an entire screen away and sometimes even off-screen whenever he needs to make a dramatic appearance in story mode. The spear is a show stealer, both lethal and beautiful in its elegance and ability to start combos, am I right? It's even reminiscent of a scorpion stinger itself. I don't think you could have scorpion as a character without it. And who knows where MK might be scorpion. if John and Ed hadn't put these two together. So, thanks for watching, combatants. We went through a ton of weapons for this list, so be sure to use whatever weaponry is available to click subscribe. Oh, and uh, show that like button who's boss. Either way, be sure to let me know your favorite and undoubtedly obscure MK weapons in the comments below. Stay tuned for more epic gaming videos from yours truly, right here on Mojo Plays. Bye for now!